Uh, let's see what the old pallet punt has got for us this week. So we can host a pallet mega challenge. A pallet challenge? Ah. Oh, so basically this video is an invitation to you, my maker friends. And to me, of course. Thanks, Mark. Mark would like you to make something out of a pallet. Or two, or three, and some other ingredients if you wish, and just to have some fun and be creative. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I will see you all very soon. Thank you. Pallet challenge. Meh, got nothing else to do. This is your tech news briefing. I'm Zoe Thomas for the Wall Street Journal. Today, we are talking about chat GPT a state-of-the-art conversational AI model providing answers to questions and even generating original content. Is this how Danesy looks at pallets when he finds them? I need to get myself my own David Kelly. The artificial intelligence chat oh, got this pallet. Oh, what the hell is this? Million users on Monday, oh, just a week. Chat? GPT? AI? Huh? Pallet challenge? AI? Hmm. Sure, here is one possible design for a pallet wood coffee table. Haha, <laughs> got it. Start by gathering the necessary materials. You will need four wooden pallets, a saw, sandpaper, wood glue, screws, a drill, and a screwdriver. Cut each of the pallets into four equal sized pieces using the saw. These will be the legs of the coffee table. Sand down the cut edges of the legs to smooth out any rough spots. AI doesn't even know what a taper is. I'm already kicking its ass. What's this AI thing say to do now? So dumb. One's cut. I can't argue with the computer's pallet furniture. What's next? Arrange the legs into a rectangular shape, with two legs on each side. Use wood glue to attach the legs together at the corners, making sure they are securely attached. Once the glue has dried, use the drill and screws to reinforce the corners of the table. Oh, shit. That's a stuff. Hello. Pocket holes on the outside. <laughs> Stuffing that up. Alright, done this. Now what? Top. Obviously. Cut a piece of wood to fit the top of the coffee table. Get it together. I've only got one clamp long enough. Two clamps long enough. This can be a single piece of wood or multiple pieces joined together, depending on the size of the table you want to make. Sand the top of the table and attach it to the legs using wood glue and screws. Once the glue has dried, sand the entire table to give it a smooth, even finish. And there you have it, a simple but sturdy pallet wood coffee table. You can customize this design by adding extra details, such as a storage shelf or drawers, or by staining or painting the wood for a more polished look. Well, this is what AI can design. Let's see what I can come up with. I'll show you this in a little bit. So let's talk human design now. What's been going through my head as a design of this coffee table was pretty much how can I beat this AI and also smash this pallet challenge at the same time. I didn't want the table to look like a classic pallet wood coffee table where you can clearly tell it's an old pallet. I wanted you to feel like this piece of furniture you could put in your modern style house and not just a rustic industrial style pallet coffee table again. Natural soft curves were a key feature I wanted to use and also wanted to steam bend some more things. So I wanted to see if this design would be a viable piece to sell one day. Maybe from something less pallety. So if you're interested in a table like this or even if you want this pallet version, leave a comment down below. One thing that actually surprised me was the fact that each of these tables came from just one pallet each with some leftover pieces that I've never seen anyone use. Quick origin story, it's been a while since I've actually worked with pallets. I started off making pallet furniture during the whole rustic phase of like 2013, 14, 15. I made and sold a bunch of these cafe tables and stalls to a few cafes. 
After a while though, when you're pulling these pallets apart with a mallet and pinch bar, you get a bit over it. And I found some ads on Gumtree for fencers who replace old hardwood timber fences with colour bond fences. But they still needed to chuck out those old fence palings. So I put my name on a list and when they had a load of fences, they come and dump them on your property for free. The amount of usable wood couldn't compare to the hassle of finding and transporting pallets home yourself. I would spend half a day pulling them apart and denailing. There's less wastage or breakage from the pallets and I recommend it highly if you're doing a big volume build. So I developed my cafe table design and sold more of those tables with the streamlined design and dark hardwood colours. They just looked awesome when they were finished. I made a huge batch of these planters and sold them as well to a well-known Sydney cafe slash restaurant. And I think they're still around there today if you want to go have a look. Anyway, I put my pallet slash fence paling years behind me now to save myself all that drama of cleaning up pallets and palings. But with the way timber prices are going, I might have to go back to it. Alright, AI is good for a lot of reasons. It can save you time by giving you basic ideas when designing. It can tell you the perfect combination of materials to use for certain projects based on scientific fact. It should tell you the most productive way of manufacturing a product or process, which I guess in turn might save you some money. But what it can't do is generate its own unique design based on your experience and skill level. It probably knows a generic way of how to do something. For example, it probably knows a generic definition of what steam bending is. If I ask it to design me a steam bent coffee table, the designer comes out with this generic and pretty much not possible either. Teaching a computer to be creative is like teaching a bird to sing a song it's never heard before. Computers can analyze and manipulate data. Creativity requires you to think outside the box, make unexpected connections with things, and have a depth of understanding that machines just don't have. It is a fundamental human quality that can't be replicated by even the most advanced AI. Human creativity is like a fire that burns within us, driving us to create and innovate. Just as a flame consumes everything in its path, our passion for creating can consume us, driving us to new heights of achievement. When we are truly passionate about something, we are willing to take risks and explore uncharted territory, pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Our creativity is fueled by our passion and the fire within us burns bright, illuminating our path and lighting the way forward. That's deep. If some of this video and voiceover sound a bit weird, that's because I got AI to write some of it. It's not all bad, it's good for some things. Have a crack yourself. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to do it. I wanna do it, it's finished. I'm gonna have to do it. Took a bit longer, but I reckon that was, that contrast is going to look a lot better. Let's put it back on. Let's try this again. That'll do me. There's my pallet coffee table designed by AI, cheap and nasty. Whereas we've got this piece that I designed with the curved. I'm really happy with how these legs have turned out. They all match up, they all bend, and look nice and schmick. Thanks, Dainzy, for setting up another challenge. Hope you've been liking this steam bending experience I've been going on. So what do you reckon? Which one's better? The AI coffee table or the Manny coffee table? Hit me up in the comments and follow along for more. What do I do with this now? Do you want it? That will do me.